Well, oh. I was sitting here thinking about the, it just it, in running it through my mind really quick, I can think of six house fires that were meth related, just not necessarily just here, but just in the last couple of uh, positions I've held. So you've got some folks who maybe couldn't pass a high school chemistry class, but they're dealing with some pretty complex uh, e equations and, and it can be very dangerous. Um, my, my youngest son was born on April 21st. I'll remember that date because that, that's, is that your birthday? All right. Well, I'm in the hospital and, and my wife will probably be mad at me for telling the story, but I'm in the hospital and I can't get away from my phone because we're always having, you know, conversations with our law enforcement and we're always trying to help them out. And uh, I get a call while my wife is literally in labor and getting ready to push. And there was a house fire and uh, they thought it was uh, related to a, uh, to a meth lab. And I'm listening very intently. I'm saying, okay, this is what we got to do. This is what we got to do. And then finally I get, uh, honey, uh, honey, I'm going to need you here. You know, so I, I had to get off the phone and, and my chief deputy handled it. We got a search warrant, arrested the guy, and he's actually still in prison. But... Uh, these, these chemicals are very dangerous, it is very complex, and that's why we see a lot of these house fires. It, it could be tapped into, and what I would say about that, okay, if you have damages and you have, uh, and you're going to try to recoup some of this money, contact me immediately. I will do anything I can to help our property owners, to help our business owners. Anytime we can get restitution, and the victim, and in this case the property owner truly is a victim in my opinion, and the victim can be made whole, we want to do that. that. That makes me feel good about my job when we can make sure that the victim recoups some of this money. So I would contact the prosecutor's office, let me know what your damages are, let me know what this is costing you. If I can help you in any way, I will. If, if I can't, now you're talking about that money, that, that's an, op, an option, okay? When somebody has that type of money, if, they're, if they are willing to release it to go to some damages, now it may have to pay for some court costs and other things like that, you know, just depending on the situation. But uh, we, we maybe could use some of that money for that. <laughs> no, you, <laughs> you will get notified before that. Um, and, and that's something I was working up to. So you're going to get this. And did I pass one of these around yet? No, I'll pass it around. So you're going to get that. Next, you're going to get a packet from the health department, okay? So I think it's Dennis Schaefer is our county health guy. Is that right? Yes. Dennis Schaefer is who. So he'll send notice to... Denny Schaefer. Next, Denny Schaefer is going to send you a packet. It's going to tell you exactly, it's going to reference that administrative code. It's got a copy of that in there. It's got a copy of IDEM certified inspectors. So you're going to have to have an inspector come out, look at your property, assess what the cleanup is going to have to be. Now hopefully it's going to be very little, but as we've seen it can be very extensive damage. So I'm going to pass this whole packet around. If you want to look at them one at a time and just kind of uh, pass it around, um, that, that's what you'll get from the health department. There, there's no specific drug court per se. I'll tell you what we do have. We have a probation department, we have a community corrections department, okay? Through those uh, two departments, uh, you can get a wide range of help, okay? You, you're talking about breaking the addiction cycle, okay? Is that, would, would that be fair to say? Yeah, and Well, so we, we, have, we have those two, uh, two programs. Uh, you can get drug treatment, you have random testing, you have graduated sanctions, you have a lot of different things. In, in criminal cases, though, the judge has a lot of latitude. The judge can do a lot of different things. I believe, uh, Judge, if there was a case a few years ago that someone went to a year-long uh, drug rehab program in Texas, Teen Challenge, okay? So the defense attorney came to the prosecutor and said, uh, we've got a program that I, I think would be really good for this defendant. It's in Texas. It's a year long. It costs this much money. We can pay for it. If we can all agree, we'll send him down there. And I think it worked. I believe it worked. He went down. He was successful. He's come back and he's doing okay. So there's a lot of different options. One thing we run into in these situations is these folks don't have the family support to get them to these alternative sentencing because a lot of this comes down to money. Okay, if you want to put somebody in a really good treatment program, it costs a lot of money. Um, now that doesn't mean that the people who are sentenced here in Posey County can't get the help they need because they can, but it may not be this fancy alternative place in Texas. It might be right here in, in the community corrections building or in the, in the probation department. But yes, there, there's a wide range of things that can be done. Um, 
And, and, you know, the judges are, from what I've seen, open to any of that if we bring that to them. So we, we're always talking to our defense attorneys and saying, what, what can we do to help? Because my goal is not always to send somebody to prison. We talk about prison and people going to prison, but that really doesn't bring me any joy to send somebody off to prison. Well, a couple of times it has. There's been, there's been some bad cases. There's, there, yeah, there's been some bad, you know, there, there are appropriate times that someone goes there. But I don't really get any joy seeing someone who is struggling with addiction and, and involved in meth labs going to prison. But in my mind, we've tried and we've tried, and it's not working. They've got to, we've got to remove the danger from your apartment complex or from your rental home. You know, we, we've, we've, got to, we've got to take them out of society. We, we have the habitual offender. Uh, in, in circumstances where uh, someone has had uh, numerous felony convictions, uh, you, you, we, the prosecutor's office can file a habitual offender and that will greatly enhance their sentence. We've got, we've got some pending now that have habitual charges. Now in a drug case, uh, the way the statutes are in Indiana, you have to have a prior drug case as well. And not just a, a prior substance abuse possession case, it's got to be a prior manufacturing or dealing. So let's say I, I, uh, uh, somebody is arrested for uh, manufacturing meth and they're charged, if, and let's say they've got uh, five prior burglaries, okay, I still cannot charge them with the habitual offender because they don't have a prior manufacturing charge. So as long as I've got one prior manufacturing or dealing charge and another felony, then the, the three strike, as you call it, will, will apply. And we do utilize that. We see both. Uh, we see a lot of folks who, are, who, who truly live in squalor and they're manufacturing to feed their habit, their friends, their family. And I mean, it's the, the living conditions are deplorable. Uh, if they're children, the children's diapers may not be changed in days. And I, I'm not exaggerating. They may not have not been changed in days. There will be animal feces. There will be no food in the house. The, the conditions are just absolutely horrendous. The, they're not making anything off this. They may be selling and they may be manufacturing, but they're not making anything off this. Now we have had some other cases where there's been a lot of big screen TVs and there's been a little cash laying around and these are folks who maybe aren't addicted, but are selling it to those who are and they are making some money off it. So, so we do see both. And, and like Detective Rose says, we've made you know, two, three thousand dollar buys before. Now that's off somebody who knows what they're doing and that's somebody who's making money. Usually when you raid a house, whether it be to arrest a drug dealer we've done undercover buys on over a period of a year or what have you, or if we're hitting a meth lab, uh, one of the big things we look for, and they sometimes they do it on their computer electronically, sometimes it's in little spiral notebooks. Uh, the person is in it for some profit, you'll find some ledgers uh, they'll have first names or initials and a numerical amount. Uh, Sometimes they'll put a lot of detail in there. There's a lot of trade for meth, too. You know, uh, we'll, we'll raid a house and they'll have 12 titles to different vehicles. And do you guys contact the federal government so the IRS can have a hand in prosecuting them as well? They usually won't get involved. <laughs> if, if we have a bigger they usually case. won't get involved. When we're dealing with the FBI or DEA or U.S. Marshal Service, if the federal prosecutor a lot of times think there's some, uh, some way they can run with it, sometimes they will, especially if we siege, you know, $100,000 worth of cash or... Then uh, they show up. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've raided, took 50, 60, 70 cars uh, in southern Indiana off car lots before when I was working with the, on the DEA task force at one time. Uh, we raided five states all at the same time, you know, 6 a.m. one morning, and we wiped out, took restaurants, what have you. The, the thing you got to remember, though, uh, on this seizure, and correct me if, if I'm wrong because I'm, I'm not an attorney. I only went to university to hit the bricks. But uh, <laughs> um, this person, this drug dealer, has their own home or their own vehicle. And we take them down with the meth lab in it or... or find evidence of dealing it out of the house uh, and let's say we want to take the vehicle and here's a question I need for you to verify as I understand it uh, let's say it's a forty forty thousand dollar fancy pickup well maybe they still owe thirty two thousand on it 
we have to pay that 32,000, so it's not right. worth us to get that other 10,000. Right, uh, forfeiture does work in, in certain situations where uh, they own the property, but again, uh, it's not often that they do. We really want to work with landlords. We want to work with, uh, you know, our small businesses, our landlords, people, people who, 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 you know, make this county run. And I think we do. You know, when, when we got somebody who's calling us and saying, I've got a problem out here, I need you guys to look into it, we respond. Uh, we come out and we check it out and we help any way that we can. And you know, first and foremost, if you've got somebody you suspect of, of cooking meth in your rental property, you want them out. That's the first thing. And that's where we can really help you. If you call me, <laughs> and, and if any of you in this room has ever called me before, say, I think I some so and so at such such an address, whether it's your rental property or your neighbor or what have you, is I think the suspicious activity with drugs going on. The very first thing I will tell you, one, uh, unless you're willing to put your name on a search warrant, I will keep your information confidential. Okay? So you feel free to give me all the info that you have. The very second thing I say to you, or to anybody that's ever called me, I don't play with aces up my sleeve. I'm not going to make you a promise I can't keep. The first thing I will tell you, drug cases, especially undercover drug cases, are a total different animal than any other regular investigations. We may get enough within a week to solve your problem, get into that house with the search warrant. It may take nine months to a year. So I tell you up front, it just depends on the circumstances. I'm not going to make you a promise, but I guarantee it. I will tell you, we're going to go take a look at it, and we'll start gathering intelligence on it. You won't know we were there. You won't see a marked squad car driving past. You know, you might be some, see somebody in a beard and ragged jeans and an old beat-up vehicle come by your house. That may be us acting or reacting to your information, and we'll start that process.